uh, ISIS has captured a great many weapons. Of course, it's rather contradictory that if weapons were really decided who the winners were, then the Iraqi government would have won. It had these weapons before they were captured by ISIS when the Iraqi army ran away. Um, the Kurds likewise say how poorly armed they were. Well, hold on a minute. They've had about 10 years to arm themselves. Mm -hmm. They have money. They could have bought weapons. So, you know, what this really shows is the political and military weakness of uh, the Iraqi government, which is probably one of the most corrupt governments in the world, and the Kurdish government, which is... Uh, uh, corrupt, not as much as Baghdad, and the fact that they, they hadn't been spending the money on arms that their armies were uh, really didn't want to fight for them. Now that may change a bit, um, but the idea that just you know pumping in some weapons is going to make a difference is really baloney. Uh, similarly, in Syria, you know the Syrian so-called moderate rebels. Uh, have been appealing for more arms now since 2011. But actually, that's not their problem. Their problem is that uh, they um, uh, they don't have quite enough popular support. Um, the weaponry wouldn't make much difference. So, you know, we'll see now. I mean, I think that um, uh, although ISIS has... Um, not taken Kurdistan and maybe never intended to, that it's still expanding. I don't really think Washington and its uh, allies have really faced up to uh, uh, the disaster they're facing in this area. On the 10th anniversary, I wrote a series of piece five pieces um, and got a sense of how weak uh, the Iraqi government was, how unpopular it was among the Sunni, uh, how Iraq has a population of about 33 million, and about 6 million of, our million of them are Sunni, um, and how they were being marginalized, and how sort of peaceful protests that they'd had, uh, which had got them nowhere, were transmuting fairly speedily into military action. That was becoming clear. Throughout last year, it became clearer. Then early this year, I wrote another series of five pieces called The Return of Al-Qaeda, um, which was really the return of Al-Qaeda type organizations. Uh, and in January, Fallujah fell to ISIS and others. And then rather amazingly, the government couldn't get it back. I mean, Fallujah is uh, 40 miles from Baghdad. Uh, so it showed the weakness of the government. Uh, it showed that um, they, they kept sort of closing down protest uh, protest uh, camps and so forth. They did everything to sort of provoke the Sunni community without really frightening them. Uh, this was very little written about at the time. Why not? Because Iraq was off the news agenda. People were quite used to violence in Iraq. They didn't really see how it was changing. The Iraqi politicians have been saying to me for two or three years, um, you know, I know everything's now being blamed on Maliki, but that's not really the case. I mean, he did many bad things, but Iraqi politicians of all sorts were saying to me, if the West, if the U.S. goes on encouraging this uprising in Syria, this Sunni uprising in Syria, uh, this it will destabilize Iraq. Uh, and this is inevitable. And um, I don't think there was any appreciation in the U.S., um, although it's pretty obvious, actually, and was obvious on the grounds, that the more they uh, encouraged the opposition in Syria, the Sunni opposition in Syria, the more that uh, they were weakening and ultimately destroying the Iraqi state. <laughs> These Syrian moderates, I mean, they sort of seem to exist in hotels in Istanbul and uh, in Paris and uh, elsewhere, but they don't really exist on, on the ground very much, um, you know, and they're getting uh, weaker by the day. Uh, I mean, there are some uh, free Syrian army which a year or two ago, the Washington wanted to take over the whole of Syria. But, you know, these are very weak. Um, and you, you have ISIS having taken over a third of the country. You have 
other parts of the country controlled by Jabhat al-Nusra, the official al-Qaeda representative, and you have uh, some other jihadi groups as well, whose ideology is very close to that of ISIS. So I think this whole business of uh, supporting the Syrian moderates, who are very much an endangered species, are saying we are now going to sort of vet them to make sure they're not jihadis and arm and equip them, they're going to fight ISIS, this terrifying organization, they're going to fight other jihadis, and they're going to fight Assad on top of it. Yeah. But that just, you know, is impossible. It's not going to happen. So this is, I think, an excuse for an absence of policy rather than a policy. Yeah.